there is an incident in the production plant, your machine or the one of your customer is standing still. This is quite a nightmare, isn't it? Surely it's the goal to avoid such incidents and it's very important to have a good troubleshooting system and a good uh, service system here. And when we talk about systems, we can surely say that the dig digitalization is more and more relevant here too. And this is exactly the topic we want to cover today. We want to talk about digital service solutions that are available already today. And we want to highlight how you as a machine builder can implement them to create a value to your customer, the machine operator. I would like to welcome you very warmly to this webcast from the series from Trend to Reality where it's all about trends in the mechanical engineering and about real solutions. My name is Anna Bronsel and I'm the Communications Manager Systems at Lenser. Before we start a few words about logistics, you have the opportunity to ask your questions directly in the chat and we will respond to them during the chat and we have some dedicated time for your questions at the end of this presentation too and we'll discuss them with our experts. Our experts today are Andre Luhmann, he's Product Manager Service at Lenser, and Thomas Johnson, he is Head of Sales at LogicLine. A warm welcome to you guys. Would you like to introduce yourself too? Hello, Anna. Hello, all. Yes, my name is Andre Luhmann. I'm in the service department responsible for the uh, services, also the digital services we would like to offer to our customers and we would like to create for our customers. That's my job and uh, I will hand over to Thomas. Hey, thank you, Andre. Yes, my name is uh, Thomas Johnson. I'm head of sales of LogicLine which is a company that belongs to the Lancer Group. We serve as a system integrator, not only for Lancer itself, but a lot of other customers around different industry sectors. And uh, our purpose is uh, building digital products, especially for IoT solutions. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot for this brief introduction. So talking about digital service and digitalization in that field, we can uh, surely say that this is not the goal really. So let's mm -hmm. start with the question, what is the key motivator, the key driver for OEMs and, uh, and, and their customers? Yeah, and uh, thanks for that point. Um, for me, it's important to make this point very clear. So digitalization is not, in end in itself. Um, uh, the last years we had that focus, but coming more and more to business uh, related topics, it means that it is uh, has a purpose in itself. That means to improve the competitive position of an especially in OEM. Therefore, I would like to share a slide uh, which may uh, help you to understand that better. This is this one here. I hope everybody can see that. We have three topics here. One is the increasingly complex install base. So that means the machines we have out there at the operators are going to be more and more complex with more and more parts which we have to maintain and which we have to be sure that they are working properly. So this is one point. That is uh, sure has an impact on cost. Next topic is shrinking margins, especially if we look at the spare parts. So we have shrinking margins uh, in the spare part business and that is already uh, has a strong impact on profit of these OEMs. Last but not least, we all talk about changing industry. That means we have new business models coming up. Uh, let's say parts per use and things like that. Uh, um, business as a service is more and more a common model. 
So these are the challenges uh, uh, of the typical OEM today. And that is what is uh, digitalization about to improve your position in the competitive uh, surroundings acting with these topics here. Yes, Thomas, um, when we see uh, Lens is a company that sells products to the customers or to their customers. And uh, what we are thinking about is uh, have more uh, customer relevant self services. Uh, what is your point? What do you think? What could be the strategy to to look to the the customers from our customers to have uh, the opportunity to offer their customers a, a good story, a, a guideline or something like that? Mm -hmm. What what do you think? Yeah, from our perspective, a typical OEM, let's say, or even an operator has different strategies he can follow. First of all, um, the first idea that comes up is I buy a product. OK, so this is then a software solution, a software product. Uh, but coming back to what we want to achieve is we want to improve our competitive position. If I buy a product, that means that the vendor of these product will sell it to another company as well. So, so where's the differentiation? There is no differentiation if I buy a standard product. So this is one opportunity. Next thing is, OK, more and more businesses say that will be a typical core uh, uh, issue. So I have to do it for my own. I have to build up a team. I have to set up this team and I will build my own solution then to be competent in that way. Problem here, often you have no team. These resources are rare and you have no experience. So at the end, that will take a lot of time and will cost you a lot of money to go to that point where you are competitive there. So maybe there's a third way. The third way is to use predefined modules. So something that is already prepared, but it, that is not a real product. So you can adjust these modules to your purposes, to your scenario, for your customers, so that it fits specially on your position in the market. And that is the way where you can uh, act with lower costs because the modules are predefined and you can uh, have an added value that fits to your market position. That is the USP you can build with your digital services. That's the way we like to go on with that and that's what we recommend to our partners. And uh, now when I'm prepared or I'm now prepared to have two stories or two things that I can do, but where would, uh, what would you offer to me to start first? What, what is the point where I can start with? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> the, the, the question is, uh, and that is often the question that we were asked is, uh, how can I start? Is it an I or is it more than a we? Because who could be the right partner for you? You are in a new field, so uh, you are not experienced with that. How can you gain experience very fast? So what we could recommend is uh, look for a partner that is very familiar in these ecosystems. Ecosystems could be SAP, for instance, Salesforce, or new ecosystems like Adamos. There are new players on the field that act in that direction in different uh, branches with uh, different companies and different uh, countries. And it's more and more important to know these ecosystems, to be familiar with them and to be a, a present member in these ecosystems. And then I would say these kind of partners, they should bring in their know-how to your company and you can use it then. OK, so you're not alone looking for the partner who is familiar with these ecosystems. That's my advice here. OK, and um, yes, what we have learned in our projects in the service department that we uh, made with you, Logic Line, that mm -hmm. we have a lot of functional tools. They are working alone very, very good. 
but the combination of those tools that is most of the or that makes most of the problems because to combine data to bring data together what what is your experience is it possible to also integrate customer solutions in in uh, such stories or is it the yeah. base good point yeah for sure because um, typically we are not in the green field so we have never ever a green field so a lot of companies they already have some parts in their digital services, let's say they have an e-commerce catalog or they have a documentation or something like that, and they want to integrate it. And that's a good idea because uh, use what you already have, see where is the actual, uh, the added value which we can provide to your customer and where are his pain points. So um, for our uh, purpose, it's very, uh, uh, very important to have a clear focus on added value for your customers. So in which point of uh, uh, his process you can support him while preventing information, preventing better services, quicker services and where he can uh, save costs. That is important to have a clear business focus for these digital services. Mm -hmm. Thomas, um, would you like to dive even a little bit deeper and share a concrete example with us here? How to create and to gain value? Yeah, okay. Uh, I would like uh, to do this. Um, with this slide here, this is an uh, example for a Smart Drive app. So first thing you see is it's an app. So you can have it at your fingertips, it's everywhere. And uh, the purpose is um, you have a problem, you have an incident somewhere in your operation. And this uh, app gives you an uh, instant uh, indication where is the incident, in which part of your uh, plant, what is the incident, how important is it, and it gives you an information uh, regarding the spare parts you need. And if these spare parts are already there or you have to ship it there or to bring it there, you can even uh, invent the bringing of the spare part to the point of your plan. And it gives you an indoor navigation. It gives you hints to the documentation. We integrated a chatbot here. So you can ask this system, hey, uh, tell me something about the incident and it gives you the right information and jumps directly into the point of the documentation you need to fix the problem. So after fixing the problem, you can document it and then you can uh, set these incident as safe and clear. So you have always a documentation and it helps you saving costs because uh, it doesn't take a long uh, uh, experience to solve this problem and even it uh, uh, reduces the downtime a lot. So you are quicker and faster up and running again. So this is a concrete example to save costs in this uh, environment here. Mm, thanks for that. Uh example and um, when you show us such an app which is uh, very very cool my next question would be hey where can i download it <laughs> thanks for that as i just mentioned uh, we prefer the third way that is these uh, these kind of app it is a prototype but we don't sell it as a product. What we have, we have all the different aspects in this app. They are modules and you can combine these modules to the product you want to sell to your customers, your digital services. So the point is, talk with us, we can show you this. And then uh, with these examples like this, this is not the only one, we have a lot of more like this, uh, we can discuss what is the right set of features for your digital services and then to build it up like that. And you can scale it up, you can scale your digital services. That's a very good point, Anna. 
because um, for us in the service department, we made a concrete thing. We built up uh, a use case. The use case was a digital inventory because what we saw was mm -hmm. uh, a tool that uh, goes up to the installed base. And uh, we saw a problem on customer side that they do not exactly know what is the installed base. What I mean is they know exactly which machine do they have. Yes, they know but they do not know what is integrated in that machinery. And that is what we saw, because when you talk to a customer and you ask him um, how many lenser drives, uh, inverters and so on you have, then they say, oh, I think I have 100. And uh, then we make the smart inventory and we see, oh, that's 150. And when you ask them again, and now please tell me in detail, which is the right thing you have, which is the right frequency converter from type and how old it is, then they do not know. That's that's a problem, but uh, uh, for that they are not prepared. And now we have tool, I will show you a little bit how it works. One second, I will present my desktop hopefully. You can see here. Yep, perfect. Hmm. <laughs> we, we built we build an app an app this uh, where our technicians go to customer site and scan the barcode the QR code of a lenser device and bring this information to a cloud and into the cloud we have the possibility to combine the knowledge about the installed base where it is located with the machine tree and so on so where is it located into the machinery we can bring also data from our production system like sap to that cloud and combine the knowledge where it is located with SAP data. We also can combine it with the documentation of the machinery, with data sheets, with live data, with the connection point to the service department. Everything is possible. So what is the advantage? You can combine with such a solution a lot of uh, data uh, lakes or something like that, or, or data points, databases to bring a big benefit to customer side. And then we saw, yes, some of the people are interested in having a in cloud application to see their installed base in a web app. But what we also see is that some of them told us, bring us the information to Excel or other uh, data formats to, uh, to, to look what I can do with it because they are much more prepared for Excel or something like that. And that is the point to bring data together to bring it to the customer in the way he want to see. And I think such solutions and such use cases can show you how you can make data very, very relevant and very, very quick for customer available. Oh. And uh, Andre, what you just mentioned is a uh, next important point. Uh, what you showed here is that is already working without connectivity. So Absolutely. you don't have to be in the cloud already. You can use this and you can use the information in it on premise. So uh, there is a possibility to start with digital solutions without being in the cloud. By yes, the way, you, you can uh, then later on uh, add cloud infrastructure and cloud functionality and you can scale it up but you can start today without being in the cloud already. That is a cool point, I think. Yes, absolutely. And if you have connectivity first, then you start with connectivity and build up the other systems around. But it's very, very important to have an idea what you would like to do and what are the applications you have in use. And when you use your applications you have in use and combine that with other solutions, then it could be, not could be, it must be, that you have a customized orientated uh, use case. Yeah. Oh. By the way, that, that is what we see in a lot of customer projects we did, that uh, different services are combined to build a special solution for these OEMs, for instance. So they combine it with uh, uh, already third party things like TeamViewer or Ampolis or things like that. It can all be integrated. And that is the interesting point because right now we don't know where these digital services will go in the future, but you have to be open. You have to have an open architecture where it can do all this and it is not limited. And in the German session, we had a question from a, one of those uh, guys. He asked, 
are you open for future things? So when I decide today for a connectivity solution, what is when it uh, doesn't work uh, tomorrow? I think we are very open with such a system because we make a platform and we can combine services. So past for services with future services, you can combine. You, you are not uh, cut it, <laughs> I, th I would like to say. Oh. Mm -hmm. And the point is here to focus on functionality and data. So functionality and data could be provided in different uh, contexts. So one is what we just saw and another thing could be uh, you have an integrated platform uh, where you can share your information uh, with other companies as well. Uh, so this is not the company as a borderline. We have different opportunities to be in networking scenarios and that is important in the future. You're talking a lot about all the opportunities um, that are coming with us digital solutions here. Um, my question is from your experience in customer projects, what are maybe the, um, the concerns customers have? And how you deal with it? First, <laughs> well, maybe I can start. First concern is uh, we collect data. Data, 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 and uh, the first meetings where uh, uh, I took place were, so we are looking at the data, but we don't get any insights from them. So we spend a lot of money without a business impact. So the first thing is uh, the business impact. Look at the business impact you want to achieve. That is important and reduce the functionality to the things you really need. That is uh, to avoid costs and to avoid a lot of work uh, which isn't useful. Next thing is a big concern is um, vendor lock-in. So-called vendor lock-in means uh, you pay a lot of uh, money for a certain platform and they will charge you each month a certain amount and you're not sure if this platform will survive the next uh, couple of years. So to avoid this is, is, is again is important to focus on functionality on your data you could provide and these are the things the, the application itself would help which helps your customer save money and which adds the value and uh, besides that everything else like uh, the uh, platform or so is more or less infrastructure and that may become more or less commodity and you can exchange that very easily but the value added comes with the app and the focus should be on that absolutely and uh, what we saw also is that when we created use cases from customer side, that the customer has a problem and we solve that problem, then he expect to use digital solutions and not with your uh, internal problems go out to the customer and help uh, to give to fulfill for him ten fields more in a digital app <laughs> to have a benefit internally. That, that that's not the, the point. Uh, see and look what is the customer's problem, solve the customer's problem, and then bring data together and start small. Don't start big with a big, as you have to, to create a big exactly. picture, but start small with small projects, small benefits, and then uh, you get also a pace on it because also the guys into your company see that there's something going on. Oh? Yeah, hey, totally agree. Let's just, <laughs> let me just uh, head in uh, because we have plenty of questions in the chat and I would like to use uh, the remaining time to address them. So let's have a look. Cost saving and time cutting is good, but how scalable are these solutions you showed? Uh, yeah, I, I think we mentioned that already uh, in the last minutes. Um, it is extremely scalable. So have a focus on the value you would add and start with the real pain point. And from there on, you go and uh, develop your solution and add more and more functionality according to the value you can add for your customers. So I, I start think small, scale up. Yeah. 
I think, uh, Thomas, it's also very important because with our solutions, uh, the customer can select the best solution for him. Uh, the best solution for him could be totally different to, dot, to that what we use. When we make a platform yeah. and we, we create applications in that platform, we I think we will not hit the customer point. We hit it 50%, 60%, 70%. It's okay, but not 100%. And so there are so many applications on the market available. And if you bring those together and combine it with your knowledge and, and the knowledge of Logic Line to bring it together, then you have the perfect solution and the perfect fit for you. I think that's the point. Huh? Yeah, and that is uh, why I mentioned uh, these partners who are familiar with ecosystems because they know a lot of these solutions. They know how to combine it and they know it from different uh, uh, sectors of industry. And uh, for instance, it could be cool to have an application that is working in medicine uh, that is working for energy as well, but mm. nobody knows. And if you are familiar with these guys in these ecosystems, you get to know that. A good example is also this. Thomas SAP. If you see SAP, you can do everything, but nothing right. Not for the user. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn to another question. Okay. Is the smart app a concept or is it working at customer side? I'm not sure if uh, you will cover that fully, but maybe you could just uh, add your views on that. Should I answer? Yeah. Yes, OK. Uh, the asset management from Lenser is available uh, in the next days in uh, Germany for the German market. So we make the first experience with our guys. They go to customer side and make a smart inventory. Um, yes, it's available also in the uh, App Store and Play Store from Google and uh, Apple. And uh, yes, the other, uh, the smart uh, app that you showed, it's it's a mock-up. It's it's uh, a proof of concept uh, we are working on. Or Thomas? Yeah, 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 exactly. We do this uh, or aspects from that in different solutions. We already implemented that in uh, some uh, companies. So it depends what you want to do, and we can show these examples and share the experience we made with that. Mm -hmm. One question that is uh, going in the in, in a, um, yeah, almost the same direction: Can every Lenser product be included in the smart app, e.g., cables, accessories? In the smart app, yes, we have two apps. Uh, if you talk to the smart inventory app, yes, you can you can scan every Lenser product, and uh, you get to every Lenser product, you get the product informations, and you can combine these product informations with the product, and then you have an asset management because you have also the location, and that that app is available, and the functionality is there for all uh, Lenser product that has a, a Lenser article number. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other app, <laughs> yes, it's uh, as we told, it's it's uh, it's a mock-up, it's a combination of services we build up and bring it to a fresh front, I will say, because what we created is a front end that combines services and it's a use case that we has one with one special customer since it's not available for us, but for him it was a benefit. Huh? I see that there are so many uh, more questions in the chat and uh, it's really getting uh, into detail, which is good. So mm -hmm. our experts will remain in the chat for another 30 minutes so you can dive in even deeper or you can just get in touch with them um, after the webcast via uh, email or um, via phone. We will put in here the contact details. We will put it in the chat too. So they are happy to discuss and dive in even deeper. I think what is today very clear is that uh, digitalization is really a topic that is in the service field getting more and more important and it can be the key driver for you to improve your competitive position. Um, I hope you enjoyed this webcast and could gather some valuable information here and you will find the information about further talks on our website or on the YouTube channel. You can have a look at the um, uh, previous uh, webcasts. You can just subscribe to our YouTube channel, so make sure you are not missing any of them. Next week, by the way, we will talk about the asset administration shell 
and talk about how concrete is the concept already today and how can I gain value of it today in the mechanical engineering. Yeah, good luck with your digital business. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.